So I'm going to use a bulk entry style to enter in this statement. Now the statement is rather small, pretty tiny. There's only a few charges here and payments, but essentially you'll get the idea of what I'm doing. And this is how I would normally go about um, quickly entering in a statement if I'm, you know, not in a rush, but if I'm pressed for time, I would say for my client and myself, this again is determined based on a conversation that I would have to have with my client, letting them know that this is going to be entered in as a journal entry style transaction, where later down the road, we're not going to go and find an individual transaction, say an invoice or a bill or a sales receipt or whatever have you, uh, where they can kind of drill down to exactly what this charge or payment was. So they're not going to have like credit card payment. They're not going to see that type of transaction type in QuickBooks. Rather, they are going to see a journal entry and the journal entry is going to contain everything in the statement, but kind of broken out. So let's go through this. That way you guys get more of an example. So what I'm going to do is I have the statement in front of me. I'm going to scroll down until I find the first set of payments here and charges here, right? So we've got, we've got these three line items that are part of the purchases and activity for this card and the fees uh, that are associated with this card. And most, well, most uh, credit cards will have some type of annual fee. Some do, uh, do not, <laughs> but this one does. So we're just going to record these three. So let me get over to my other window. So here in QuickBooks, I'm going to open up a journal entry and the date I'm going to use is the statement ending date. And in this case, if I was to go back um, and look at the statement ending date, it would be 4 24 23. Okay, now I'll go back to the original or you guys can just rewind and look at the statement balance as of or the ending date. And that's the date I'm going to use. Uh, and so I'll, I'll go back and show you again, but you can always rewind and look. So that's the date I'll end, um, add, not end, <laughs> here, 042423. And then I have my own style of journal entry number it's my initials and then the date of the entry and then i usually do a dash and one two three depending on how many transactions i have for this date sometimes i'll add words here if it's like a whole balance or a whole statement and in this case um i would probably put a statement that way i understand when i look back at my journal entry number that's what i did uh, so the account is going to look like the charges. And if I was to go back and look, and you guys can always rewind, but uh, let me pause and then go back to my screen. All right. And this is the statement, right? And here's the statement ending uh, the period. And it says, you know, 4 23 but then statement balance as of, that's the date I had referred to then. And you see that date frequently around the statement. So that's the date I'm referring to, not the last charge on the statement. That would be incorrect um, because I'm going to be adding all of this into my QuickBooks. So the first one would be here. And um, what I would do here is I would actually put this on the posting date. Uh, you can choose the transaction date, say so transaction to posting. They have two different dates. Um, choose whichever one you want. Just know which one you used. Okay. So I'm going to actually put the posting date when it hit the credit card. So you see, it's, you know, usually a day or two days after I'm going to use these dates here. So if you're following along, remember this in your mind, we're going to be using these dates here and these descriptions, I'm literally going to copy and paste the descriptions, and then I'm going to add the dollar amount. And what I normally do is I will section off, um, things that, or group, not section, but group off things that are of similar uh, categories. So like if these two here, for instance, were, you know, this is Hobby Lobby, this is supplies, and then Arizona Premier, if this is supplies as well, as I would confirm with my clients, if that's what those purchases were, I'll go ahead and just combine these two numbers together. 
But however, in this case, since I only have the three, I'm gonna be separating them just for this exercise. And as I go through this exercise, instead of going you know, piece by piece, I want you guys to go ahead and pause if you're following along and you want to do this exercise with me on like say the sample company, uh, write down the information because I'm gonna have this up on my screen and I, since I have a dual screen, I'll be putting in this information as you follow along, okay? All right, so the first amount was for, oh, and um, I should go back and tell you that the date, <laughs> we were talking about the posting and the transaction date. Since I'm not going through and doing every line by date because I can only have one journal date, which is the last statement date, I'm actually not going to be using the date at all. So my apologies for that confusion. But I will still be using the same information. So the first line, the account, this is supplies. So I'm just going to put uh, supplies. And I think my client has a few supplies here. So uh, this one is particularly Hobby Lobby, gym supplies. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the description that I see here, literal copy and paste, but the debits. So because it's a credit card, right? And I'm making, um, I'm making a purchase, I'm using credit, I'm gonna be increasing that credit. So that's gonna be here, uh, 55.17. And I'm not gonna put Hobby Lobby here in the name, no need for that. Uh, and then the next one looks like I will be using Arizona Premier Dermat. Okay, so this is gonna be uh, supplies as well, gym supplies, and I'm gonna I mean, I could put them together, right? So I can put gym supplies. So actually, I think this is actually more gym equipment. Yeah, because you can simply do like a quick Google search, guys. If you don't wanna bother your client, which I recommend doing, not bothering your client, but I recommend you guys looking um, up the description, kind of typing into Google, uh, Arizona Premier Dermat Phoenix, Arizona, and see what pops up. Kind of do some research before you go and bother your client with a billion jillion questions or some simple questions that we could easily find out if we Googled something or if we looked for a similar type of transaction that might have happened in the past, right? And you can simply just use, uh, well, you can't see here, but it, there's that um, on a different screen when I close out of here, you'll see the mic, not microphone, what the heck? The, the little search uh, magnifying glass, that'll help you with that. So anyway, uh, this will automatically try to balance that out. I'm going to use the dollar amount I see here. And this time I'm going to add this description here like this. And then we're gonna move on to the next one. And the next one is the annual fee. So this is, uh, I'm gonna type in fee. This would be a bank fee. And that, to uh, that total is incorrect. It's gonna be $99. And I can just type in annual fee or I can copy and paste. I'm a big fan of copy and paste because when I copy and paste, I'm not liable for what was put on and I don't have to worry about copying the exact words you know, incorrectly. All right, now here is where I'm gonna put the credit card. And it's gonna look like that. I hope I have it on the right. I did not bring in my cheat sheet. Uh, so what I'm gonna see hopefully, and I'm gonna pull up the, uh, in the next screen, it'll be the bank or the credit card register. So we'll see if I entered this <laughs> correct. I definitely have not had my morning tea or coffee. So I'm gonna save and close. All right. And here is that journal entry we just did right there. Well, it's actually all three of these because they're the same. Well, this one is. So we've got the total at 524.95. So at the ending balance, my ending balance should notate that 524.95. And if you guys go back, just rewind a tiny bit, you'll see that the statement balance as of 424.23 is $524.95. It's exactly to the penny that my statement says. And that's 
the ending balance there. So that's how you guys are going to put in a bulk statement using the journal entry method. I hope this answers some questions. I hope this video wasn't too long and <laughs> it helps uh, you guys become a little more efficient when entering, you know, a lot of information and statements from your clients, not having to worry about connecting any bank statements. So hope this helped. Thanks guys.